The Cube presents KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to Valencia, Spain and KubeCon, CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. I'm Keith Townsend along with Paul Gillen, Senior Editor, Enterprise Architecture at Silicon Angle, we are talking to some incredible folks this week, continuing the conversation around enabling developers to do their work. Paul, you've said that this conference is about developers. What are you finding key as a theme running throughout the show? That, de that developers really need a whole set of special tools. You know, it's not the end user uh, the end user tools, uh, the end user uh, access controls, the authentication, it's developers need, a, need uh, their own, to live their, in their own environment. They need their own workflow tools, their own collaboration, and their own security, and that's where Teleport comes in. So speaking of Teleport, we have Michael Ferrenti, Chief Marketing Art Officer at Teleport. New world role for you first. Tell me about how long have you been at Teleport now? Um, going on seven or eight months now. Seven or eight months in this fast moving market. I'm, I'm going to tell you a painful experience I've had in this new world. We've built applications, uh, we've moved fast, audit has come in, the auditors have come in, and they said, you know what, who authorized this change to the cluster? And we'll go into the change ticket and say, this person authorized the change. It's in the change ticket, and uh, then they'll ask for trace back, okay, show me the change. What do you mean show you the change? It, it, it just happened. Yeah, ch check GitHub. <laughs> yeah, check <laughs> GitHub. <laughs> see, we, 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 we said we were going to make the change, and the change happened. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. What are, how are you helping customers solve this access control and audit problem? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, they're kind of they're kind of two two sides of the puzzle, and actually, I think the the intro hits it well. You you've talked about kind of developer experience needing needing tools to more efficiently do the job as a practitioner, and you're coming at it from kind of a security and compliance angle. Um, and there's a tension between both of those teams. It's like you know there's there was a tension between Dev and Ops before we created DevOps. There's also a tension between kind of security teams um, and developers. So we've created DevSecOps. What that means is you need an easy way for developers to get access, access to the resources they need to do their jobs, that's you know, uh, Linux hosts and databases and Kubernetes clusters and you know, uh, monitoring dashboards. And managing all of those credentials um, is quite cumbersome. If I need to access a dozen systems, then you know, I'm using SSH keys to access this, I have admin credentials for my database, I have, I'm going through a VPN to access an internal dashboard. Um, Teleport consolidates all of that access into a single login via your identity provider, Okta Active Directory. But then on the security and compliance side, we make it really easy for that compliance officer, when they say, show me that change, we have all of the audit logs that's, that show exactly what changes um, Keith made when he logged into, um, uh, into that system. And in fact, one of the booths behind here is talking about um, eBPF. Uh, a modern way to get that kind of kernel level granularity. We build all of that observability into Teleport um, to make the security and compliance teams happy and the engineering teams a lot more productive. Where do the, uh, the access control tools like Okta you mentioned fall short? I mean, why, why is there a need for your level of, of control at the control plane? Yeah, when you, when you start to talk about authorization, um, authentication, audit, at the infrastructure level. Um, each of these um, technologies has its own way of managing um, uh, what kind of in, in the jargon, auth in and auth z, right? Authentication, authorization. Um, so you have SSH for, for Linux, um, uh, Kubernetes has its own way of doing um, authorization, all of the database providers have their own way, um, and it's quite complicated, right? It's, it's much different, so you know, if I'm going to access Office 365 or I'm going to access Salesforce, right, I'm really talking about the HTTP protocol. It's relatively trivial to implement um, single sign-on for web-based applications, but when we start talking about things that are happening at the Linux kernel level or with Kubernetes, it's quite complicated to build those integrations. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where Teleport um, extends what you have with your IDP. So for instance, Okta. Lots of our customers use Okta, 
for, as their identity provider, but then Teleport takes those roles and applies them and enforces hmm. them at the actual infrastructure level. So if I'm a lay developer, I'm looking at this thinking, you know, I, I have service mesh, I've implemented Linkerd SEO or something to that level, and I also have Ansible, and Ansible has security, et cetera. What, what role or how does that integrate to all together from a big picture perspective? Yeah, so what one of the kind of the meta themes at Teleport is we we like to we like to say that we are fighting complexity. Because as we build new technologies, we tend to run the new tech on top of the old tech. Um, whereas, for instance, when you buy a new car, you typically don't you know, hook the old car to the back and then pull it around with you, right? We, we replace um, old technology with new technology, but in infrastructure, that doesn't happen as often. And so you end up with kind of layers of complexity with one protocol sitting on top of another protocol on top of another protocol. And what Teleport does is for the access control plane, um, we we kind of replace the legacy ways of doing authentication, authorization, and audit with a new modern experience, but we allow you to continue to use the existing tools. So we don't replace, for instance, you know, your um, configuration management system. Um, you can keep using Ansible or, or um, uh, Salt or Jenkins, but Teleport now is going to give those, um, those scripts or those pipelines an identity that you can define what what should Ansible be able to do, right? Because people are worried about supply chain attacks. If a, um, if a vulnerable dependency gets introduced into your supply chain pipeline and your kind of Ansible playbook goes crazy and starts deploying that vulnerability everywhere, that's probably something you want to limit. With Teleport, you can limit that with an identity, um, but you can still use the tools that you're, that you're used to. Um, so, how do I guarantee something like an ex-employee doesn't come in and, and initiate an uh, Ansible script that was sitting in the background just waiting to happen in, until you know, they left? Yeah, great question. It's, um, um, there's kind of the, the, the great resignation that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, we did a survey where actually, we asked the question kind of, you know, can you guarantee that ex-employees can no longer access your infrastructure? Um, and shockingly, like 89% of companies could not guarantee that. It's like, wow, that's, like, that, should, that should be a headline somewhere. Um, and we actually just learned that there are, on the dark web, there are people that are targeting current employees of Netflix and Uber and trying to buy credentials of those employees to the infrastructure. So it's a big problem. Uh, with Teleport, we solve this in a really easy, transparent way for developers. Um, everything that we do is based on um, short-lived certificates. So um, unlike a SSH key, which exists until you decommission it, um, short-lived certificates by, de by default expire. And if you don't reissue them based on a new login, based on the identity, um, then, um, then you can't do anything. So even a stolen credential, um, kind of the, the, its value um, uh, decreases dramatically over time. So that statistic where four out of five companies can't guarantee ex-employees can't access infrastructure, why is simply removing the employee from the, you know, from the LDAP or directory, decommissioning their login credentials, why is that not sufficient? Well, um, it, it depends on if everything is integrated into your identity provider. Um, and because of the complexities of accessing infrastructure, um, we know that developers are creative people. Um, and by, by, um, kind of by definition, they're able to create systems to make their lives easier. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that we see developers doing is kind of copying an SSH key um, to a local um, uh, notepad. Um, on, on their computer. So they essentially can take that credential out of a vault, they can put it somewhere that's easier for them to access, and if you're not rotating that credential, then I can also you know, copy it to a, to a personal device as well. Um, same thing for um, shared admin credentials. Um, so the, the, the issue is that those credentials are not completely managed in a unified way um, that enables the developer to not go around the system um, in order to make their lives easier, but rather to actually use the system. Um, there's, a, there's a market called uh, privileged access management um, that a lot of enterprises are using to kind of manage credentials for their developers, uh, but it's notoriously um, disruptive to developer workflows, and so developers kind of go around the system in order to make their jobs easier. 
What Teleport does is we obviate the need to go around the system, because the simplest thing is just to come in in the morning, log in one time to my identity provider, and now I have access to all of my servers, all of my databases, all of my Kubernetes clusters, with a short-lived certificate that's completely transparent. And does this apply to, to your, both your local and your cloud accounts? Yes, yes, exactly. So as a security company, what's driving the increase in security breaches? Is it the lack of developer hygiene? Is it this ex-employee great resignation bill? Is it external intruders? What's driving security breaches today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's, it's all of those things. I think if I had to put, give you a one word answer, I would say complexity. Um, the systems that we are building are just massively complex, right? Look at how many vendors there are at this show in order to make Kubernetes um, uh, easy to use, yeah. to do what it, its promises. It's just, we're building very complex systems. When you build complex systems, um, there's a lot of uh, back doors. Uh, we call it um, kind of attack surface. And that's why for every new thing that we introduce, we also need to think about how do we remove old layers of the stack so that we can simplify, so that we can consolidate and take advantage of the power of something like Kubernetes without introducing security vulnerabilities. One of the problems or challenges with security solutions is you know, you, there's this complexity versus flexibility knob that you, you need to be careful of. What's the deployment experience and integration experience for deploying Teleport? Yeah, it's, um, it, we built it to be um, cloud native to feel like any other um, uh, kind of cloud native or Kubernetes like solution. So you basically, you, you deploy it using a Helm chart, you deploy it um, uh, using containers, um, and we take care of all of the auto configuration and auto update um, so that it's just, it's, it's part of your stack and you manage it using the same automation that you use to manage everything else. Um, that's, a, that's a big, kind of installation and developer experience part of it. If it's complex to use, then not only are developers not going to use it, operations teams are not going to want to have to deal with it, and then you're left with doing things the old way, which is very unsatisfactory for everybody. How does Kubernetes change the security equation? Are there vulnerabilities it introduces to the, to the stack that maybe companies aren't aware of? Um, Almost by definition, yes. Kind of any new technology is going to introduce um, new security vulnerabilities. Um, that's the that's that is the result of the complexity, um, which is there are things that you just don't know when you introduce new components. Um, I think kind of all of the supply chain vulnerabilities um, are our way of looking at that, which is we have you know Kubernetes is itself built on a lot of dependencies. Um, those dependencies themselves could have security vulnerabilities. You might have a package that's maintained by one kind of hobbyist developer, um, but that's actually deployed across hundreds of thousands of applications mm -hmm. across, across the internet. Um, so again, it's about, one, understanding that that complexity exists, um, and then saying, is there a way that we can kind of layer on a solution that provides a common layer um, to let us kind of avoid that complexity and say, okay, every critical action um, needs to be authorized with an identity. Um, that way, if it's automated or if it's human, I have that level of assurance that a hacked um, uh, Ansible pipeline is not going to be able to introduce um, uh, vulnerabilities across my entire infrastructure. So one of the challenges for CIOs and CTOs is the lack of developer resources. Uh, and another resulting pain point that compounds that issue is rework due to security audits. Is Teleport a source of truth that when a auditor comes in to audit a, 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 a CI CD pipeline, that the developer or, or operations team can just say, hey, here's self-service, get what you need, and uh, come back to us with any questions, or is there a second set of tools we have to use to get that audit and compliance reporting? Yeah, it's, um, Teleport can be that single source of truth. Um, we can also integrate with your um, other system, so you can export all of the, um, what we call access logs. So every, every behavior that took place, every query that was run on a database, um, every um, you know, uh, curl command that was run on a Linux host, um, Teleport is creating a log of that, 
Um, and so you can go in and you can filter and you can view those, um, those actions within Teleport, but we also integrate with other systems that, that people are using. You have it Splunk or Datadog or whatever other tool chain. It's really important that we integrate, uh, but you can also use Teleport as that single source. So you can truth. work with the observability suites that uh, are now being uh, yep. uh, installed. Yep. The, the wonderful thing about kind of an ecosystem like Kubernetes is there's a lot of standardization. You can pick your preferred tool, but under the hood, the protocols for um, uh, taking a log and putting it in another system are standardized, and so we can integrate with any of the tools that developers are already using. So how big is Teleport? When I'm thinking about a, from a couple of things, big, as in what's the footprint, and then from a uh, developer operations team overhead, is this kind of a set it and forget it? How much care, feed, and maintenance does it need? Um, so it's very lightweight. Um, we basically have kind of two components. Um, there's a, the, the access proxy that sits in front of your infrastructure, um, and that's what enables us to, you know, regardless of the complexity that sits across your multi data center footprint, um, your traditional applications running on Windows, your, your, your modern applications running on you know, Linux and Kubernetes, we provide um, seamless access to all of that. Um, and then there's an agent that runs on all of your hosts, and this is the part that can be deployed um, using your Helm or any other kind of cloud native deployment methodology that enables us to do the, the granular application level um, uh, audit, for instance, what queries are actually being run on CockroachDB or on, um, on Postgres, um, you know, what, what uh, syscalls are running on Linux kernel. Um, very lightweight, um, automation can be used to install, manage, upgrade all of it. Um, and so from an operations perspective, kind of bringing in Teleport shouldn't be any more complicated than running any application on a container. That's, that's the design goal um, and what we built for our customers. If I'm in a hybrid environment, I'm transitioning, I'm making the migration to Teleport, is this a, team, is this a solution that sits only on the uh, Kubernetes cloud native side or is this something that I can trans transition to initially and then migrate all of my applications to as I transition to cloud native? Yep, we, um, there are kind of no there are no cloud native dependencies for Teleport, meaning if you are, um, you're 100% Windows shop, um, then we support, uh, for instance, RDP. Um, that's the way in which Windows um, handles remote access. Um, if you have um, some applications that are running on Linux, uh, we can support that as well. Um, if you've got kind of the, you know, the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you're doing everything cloud native, containers, Kubernetes, everything, we also support that. Well, Michael, I really appreciate you stopping by and sharing the teleport story. Security is becoming an obvious pain point for cloud native and container management, and uh, teleport has a really good uh, story around ensuring compliance and security. From Valencia, Spain, I'm Keith Townsend, along with Paul Gillen, and you're watching The Q, the, the leader, not the, the, the leader in high-tech tech coverage.